Hello everyone, this is Tim Gaiesh one more time, and I'm going to do another facial analysis for you just now. This is Leanne, 35 year old gal from Australia, and she's got some pretty neat things going on here in her photo that uh, is, is perfect for uh, teaching teaching you guys how to uh, do a facial analysis. Uh, we're gonna I'm going to jump right into it here, and I'm going to first hit the eyes, because uh, this is where the biggest thing is, and I'll... I'll do it now and I'll probably come back to it again later and talk about it a bit more. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to look at here on Leanne is her under is the under lids or the lower lids of her eyes. And I'm just going to blow it up here for you so that you can see. And you can see adrenal fatigue. I, I spoke in the first video about adrenal fatigue and the dark discoloration. And as I told you, it could be red, it could be black, it could be brown, or it could be blue. Uh, in this case here, we're seeing some some black. It looks like a bit of black or dark brown and red here. She's got some pretty serious adrenal fatigue going on here, and this is uh, th this really needs to be taken care of. Uh, I, I only because I'm just going to touch it a little bit. I'm going to just jump up a bit on, on here and keep it her forehead. A single a single line. Actually, there's a few little tiny ones in there. Yes, she does have some heavy metals that are present. Uh, which correlates or, or links to, to the uh, adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue, as you know from the first video, is best treated with silica. Uh, but uh, you, you see the calcium fluoride, but I'm going to get to that because that's going to need a much longer explanation tonight uh, on why. Why and how it all links to a bunch of other things that uh, Leanne has going on here. But let, we're going to go back here to the adrenal fatigue. The adrenal fatigue is very, very obvious. You know, it's running into the upper eyelids. That it, uh, this girl's got it, got it quite, quite bad. But what, uh, what else she has going on here? She has anemia. She has all the signs of anemia. Uh, th and that it too is going to take a bit of, bit of a greater explanation. But I'm just going to switch over here, and I'm going to blow up the picture a little so that you can see it. And you can see the brown discoloration. Oops, the brown discoloration that continues. You can see the adrenal fatigue. The the, the increased darkness is the half the eye, half the, the low half the lower eyelid is right here. Yes, that's adrenal fatigue. But some discoloration is continuing right to, right to the outer edge of the of the eye, and you can see that here. That's w that's where it becomes evident. This is anem. This is a sign of anemia. With anemia. There's another thing to look for, and here we have it: the the redness of of the, the nostrils. Uh, there's some yellow around here, but we'll talk about this later. Don't get don't get too concerned with that yet. But the the redness of the nostrils. You see some red on the flaring of the nose. Uh, th that that that's linking up to some anemia that's going on. I've talked to uh, Leanne about this a little bit this afternoon, and she she was already aware that she was anemic and has been for years but uh, just so that you know in, in, in teaching you here today that you're seeing the, the red flares of the nose oh, actually I'm gonna put that up a little bit the red flare the red flares of the nose uh, coming from the nostrils and, and on the flares as well as the discoloration if you took if you took away the adrenal fatigue here you'd see the discoloration continue right across the lower lid uh, but we, we've got definite uh, anemia going on here now, how am I going to treat the anemia? This is going to be different from what, to, from what anything you've learned so far, and this is about knowing the fa the uh, facial symptoms or signs when when looking at the biochemical tissue salts. Uh, in this case, when you when you're looking at anemia, you've got four options to look at. So you you've got magnesium sulfate, uh, calcium phosphate, nat nat natrium muriaticum and you have ferrum phosphate. Now, for her, I'm going to recommend two, and I'm going to recommend ferrum phosphate, and I'm going to recommend CalFOS. Uh, mainly CalFOS, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Uh, wi with anemia, the, wi uh, sorry, with the facial diagnosis, what you want to do is look at the signs. W once you find one, you're going to try to tie in what's all of what you can from all, all of the possible facial diagnoses that match a, a any one given tissue salt. Now, with uh, Leanne here, 
excuse me. She uh, she doesn't have the signs. Of the magnesium sulfate just it doesn't match. She doesn't she doesn't have a yellow yellow pale skin. Uh, she actually has quite dark skin. Uh, she doesn't have a scaly rash. Uh, so we're not go we're, we're gonna we can eliminate that one. Nat Muir, uh, the nasolabial folds aren't there. They're not there. She does. She does. She's not deficient in that anymore. She's she's, she's getting enough so salt. Uh, so I'm going to jump now, and I'm going to talk talk about uh, calcium phosphate. Now, calcium phosphate, and you can see that her skin does look a little scaly. Not a rash, but scaly, as in the pigmentation and the the differ the differences between skin tone and freckling. And you can see there's lots of freckling there. And I'm just going to blow that up for you here. You can see that it does look a little scaly. A little scaly. Uh, we'll go down and we'll look at the corners of the mouth. Both corners of the mouth are cracked and dried now. She does. She does have a colser on her lips. Uh, I'm not really going to address that today because she just this this gal's been treating her two children with chicken pox. Uh, her immune system is likely very weak right now as a result of that. So. I'm not going to put too long, too too much time to talking about that cold sore. In other cases, we'd be looking would be looking at zinc and selenium. We'd be looking to boost the immune system to try to try to try to help her. If the, this was an ongoing chronic issue, but it it's not. This is something that's not typical. Uh, it's only come at a time when she's been treating her two children, which have chicken pox. So g going back going back to the uh, calfos and why I specifically chose calfos for this gal. Uh, she really matches all of the symptoms of a cow phos phos deficiency in that she has the cor the corners of her mouth are indeed cracked Th that that's a perfect example of a cow phos deficiency she does have the scaly skin uh, she does have diversified folds under see these little, little lines here y you're looking at you can see them all there Th that's what you would call diversified folds they they are an indication as, w as well of, cal of a calphos deficiency, uh, and she does have shiny skin. Now, I yesterday when we talked about uh, natphos, sorry, the natphos, and we, we we looked at the signs of the greasy of the oily T zone, you can see here that she does have an oily T zone, but she's pretty shiny here in, in, in on the face as well. So it's not it's not limited to one area. Th this is something that, that's going across her skin. Uh, th this, you know, we've got, we got at least five things here right now because she is anemic with the, the uh, dark brown under, or the brown under her, her dark skin, grayish under her eyes, which is showing a sign of anemia. She has the, the oily or shiny skin, the diversified folds, the corner of her mouth, and the scaly looking skin. She has a lot here that's pointing. She just, yes, there are four different options for anemia, but in this particular gal, it's 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 apparently obvious that she needs calphos, so I am going to also supplement that with ferrum phosphate because this is a problem that this gal has had for years, uh, and I'd like to get her hemoglobin levels up and get some some more iron into her blood. Uh, ferrum phosphate, ferrum of course, is the old Latin term for iron, and it's iron phosphate is what it actually is. So I want to get some I some iron into this gal and, and get her feeling better. Uh, even though she claims she doesn't feel better, I think she's going to. She doesn't feel bad. Sorry, uh, I think once she gets on th this treatment, she's not going to realize how good that she, she that she didn't realize how good that she can feel, and uh, I think she's going to get quite a surprise. Now, I know that's a, an awful lot of talk about just one one uh, under her eyes and one salt, but when you you start tying that all together, you you really. That that's when you realize it, like it's be it's right in your face, and you know that this is it. Like everything everything matches, and that's what you want to try to do whenever you whenever you do any salt. Sometimes it's not possible. Like I told, as we spoke about the uh, heavy metals, which would be a need for copper mars and silica. Copper mars, copper mars, of course, chelating the heavy metals within the body. Silica binding and compounding on top of the heavy metals, drawing it out of the, out of the fat tissues or organs uh, and running, letting it pass out the body through the urine. Uh, th that's different. You've got, you've got two options with this. 
with this when you've got multiple options for a, a single issue you start looking to tie, tie the rest of it together so I'm going to move now and this is going to probably be equally as long uh, the talk uh, the very obvious uh, calcium fluoride deficiency I looked at photos of her children for her as well and y you might find this interesting that both of her children are also anemic and have calcium fluoride deficiencies now Leanne did tell me that she was anemic she did tell me uh, that she's had that she's had is issues for years but I uh, <laughs> unknowing to her went and uh, snuck in into her Facebook profile and I looked at some old pictures from back in 2007 uh, even back then when she was handy 30 years old uh, the calcium fluoride deficiency w was evident then and you can see how deep and discolored the the this cubicle fold is and for those who never saw the first video this is a cubicle fold runs from the inner corner of the eyes so and swoops down can be vertical but it mainly it runs this way uh, now you can see the dark discoloration inside it this is a heavy 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 uh, calcium fluoride deficiency now as I said earlier she did tell me and warn me that she does have hormonal issues and yeah she's right and calcium fluoride I believe is a culprit again just just like with the calfos that's calcium phosphate that we talked about earlier uh, with the calfos where the, you can tie in many things uh, when you you look at the uh, calcium fluoride deficiency here and you can tie it I, where I could see it from years back on her this is something that's been long term it's a chronic issue uh, calcium fluoride is again as I spoke about yesterday uh, is relevant <sighs> calcium fluoride will help level estrogen and progesterone uh, if you if you have an estrogen deficient sorry estrogen dominance or deficiency or progesterone lacking or de deficiency within your body calcium fluoride you all always look towards the calcium fluoride there are others there are others mag manganese sulfate uh, which would tie in with what we said but er, earlier on the anemia but that's definitely ca cal calcium phosphate anyway we, just just to continue on we're going to try to try to look and tie tie in some more things for cal for the calcium fluoride I really don't need to because once these cubicle folds are present uh, that's all that's needed when you're you're looking at calcium fluoride you don't need to tie everything together but there's so much going on here with this with this gal that I just want to go through and explain it all to you well, in calcium fluoride, you've got you've got your dark upper lids, and here they are. They 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 don't get much darker. Uh, sorry, Leanne, but they don't. Uh, you look at the upper lip on this gal, and you can see abnormal hair growth on the upper lip. That's hormonal. Typically, estrogen or progesterone as well. Uh, we we've, we've got we there's definitely some hair issues there. Now. We'll move down here and we're going to go to the chin. Again, we spoke yesterday about chin acne and chin discoloration. It's completely the acne, if you look, she's got a bit of rosacea or inflammation going here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but that's not acne, that's rosacea. So we're, we're looking, we've got chin acne, we've got chin acne, we've got abnormal hair growth, we have calcium fluoride, calcium fluoride. Everything's calcium fluoride. Uh, I believe calcium fluoride is, is going to resolve her issue for her, uh, because there are a couple of things that things that la that uh, do link the manganese sulfate as well. It, it's it wouldn't hurt her, I, but I, I don't think I I would actually wait. Uh, do take the calcium fluoride, and, and this this gal is going to need in this instance because it's so severe. I would actually recommend to this gal that she take a double adult do dosage, which would be two. Uh, sorry, that would be six, six X tablets two times per day uh, for the first month, and then after a month, do a before and after picture. Look, look at the signs and symptoms again. See if they begin begin to uh, drop or or, or lessen, a and then come back down to a normal adult dosage of the tissue salt, which would be three tablets of six X potency two times per day. So we've already addressed the the chin acne we we've tied it to 
the hair on the upper lip. We've tied it uh, to the cubicle fold and the dark upper, the dark eyelids. Uh, now, again, that that's calcium fluoride, and this gal really, really needs some. Now, where to move on to? Uh, we've already addressed. Oh, let, let's go before I. You prob you guys have probably already seen the signs of the thyroid, but I'm gonna wait and do that last. And this gal here, uh, calcium sulfuricum or potassium sulfate. Uh, this gal is deficient. Uh, you the the same. I'm just gonna back off a bit. Back off a bit here on the picture, and I'll show you. All of the these this freckling. One would think, okay, she just gets too much salt, too, uh, too much sun, uh, too much sun going on for her. But no, uh, there's a little more going on here, and I'm going to show you. And this is something to watch for. And this is potassium sulfate. You see this lip, the the lip around the lip. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it it, it is. There, there's a brown lip around. Or, that or edge around the lip, uh, uh, discoloration. That is a that is a sign of a calcium or potassium sulfate deficiency. As well, when you blow this picture up, you can see some yellowing here around the upper lip. Again, that that again is potassium sulfate. Freckles, freckles themselves, uh, when non-genetic. This is something not not born with, or something that's exaggerated over the years is a sign of a calcium sulfate deficiency. Uh, she has the dark brownish color skin. She has the freckles and again I know we, we, we've already linked this to the calcium fluoride but those dark eyelids are also are also a symptom or a sign of, of uh, potassium sulfate. So we've got a lot here to tie in uh, potassium sulfate as well and it's something that I am going to suggest to her but is what I'm going to suggest to her as well and this is not related to tissue salts is when you see skin uh, like this uh, where the this is very obviously non-genetic freckling I would I would suggest to this gal to Leanne here that she take some hydrogen peroxide at about three percent uh, mixed with equal parts of pure natural organic lemon juice and apply it to her face uh, once or twice a day. In about a month, her face will look, uh, I would say, probably about 80 to 90 percent better. Uh, the, the difference, all of these will fade, the, the skin tone will even, uh, she'll be very happy. Remember, I, have an, I do as well prior to getting into homeopathy, or home homeopathy, however, US, Canada, wherever, homeopathy. Uh, I was a medical aesthetics practitioner and I did a lot of IPL treatments, e-light, uh, some skin resurfacing for issues just like this. I wish at that time that I, uh, I, I I really knew of calcium sulfate and was able to treat my patients with it. Anyway, we're going to move on to the, la the last item here. and The last, the last issue that uh, I see here in Leanne. Hello, thyroid. We already talked about the lines. Here's your thyroid. There's no lines. Look at the line is coming here, and then it stops. It's stopping right here, just before the this thyroid. This thi thyroid is about two inches wide. Looks a bit like a butterfly or a set of lungs, uh, but this is where it is right here, and this is a sure sign. When a line stops here, it's stopping right at the thyroid. That means there's been some some constant or chronic inflammation of the thyroid. Now with Leanne she has other issues as well that are showing it now. Remember that the T3 and T4 are hormones as well that are produced by the thyroid. Uh, the, the, is the, issue, the issues with the, the when we talked earlier about hormonal uh, not, not related to this though the calcium fluoride I, I have to admit can help me as we talked about yesterday calcium fluoride is what gives elasticity to tissue. So any of your organs that are being deprived of calcium fluoride are be going to become hard. They're not going to be able to work as work, work as good as they should be, uh, because you've got a, a hard or a tough outer core. That includes your heart, folks. Remember when you when you have the calcium fluoride deficiency, as this gal does here, and, and these signs are evident, 
not only is your skin and the connective tissue of your of the, of the skin and your body and the, the glands remember that there are critical organs as well such as your heart your liver all all those things are stiffening up as well when when your body is lacking of calcium calcium fluoride so anyway we're going to go back here to the thyroid and that ca it, the calcium fluoride can have an issue here as well and it might have actually been the cause that started it but uh, now now we need to correct correct that and we're going to go back here and just link up this uh, thyroid with her eyes and there's two things in the eyes that you can notice here that are going to they're going to correlate with the thyroid the first one is, is the same as we spoke of yesterday you can see that what appears that her right eye has a slight outturn uh, measure the distance of the white here and you can actually just sit here and look at this picture right now and you can see that this right eye is got a slight outturn there's far more white than there is right here at a quick glance you can know you can indeed notice it uh, but as well you, you, if you if you look closely you can see that her eyes are almost bulging I believe that uh, poor Leanne here has a little more than just a, a slight dysfunction in her thyroid I believe I believe that she's got something else uh, something a little more going on I don't think there's anything critical or serious that that's uh, she needs to run to a hospital tonight for her, but uh, there, there's something a little more because of the bul the bulging eyes are what you hear about in orthodox medicine is what they talk about okay you only you only have a thyroid issue if your eyes eyes are bulging no that's when it's reached the point that it's probably irreversible when you get to the point where where your eyes are bulging not 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 that that's the on only uh, symptom of it but as well have a peek at her neck here and I'm just going to scroll out so that you can look at the balance and the lines um, there, there's a fundamental difference in, in the uh, shape of her neck. Uh, whenever you see a na neck like that, that's not shaped, not balanced, I guess is the is the best way to say it. Uh, you you can see here. I'm not seeing a lot of inflammation here, but there's an imbalance. There's, there are there is some inflammation going on here, and if you you tie all those four things together, the uh, the issue of the thyroid seems seems quite evident here. Uh, that's all that we have on Leanne for today, but I'm just going to run back and, and go through from top to bottom right quick one more time as I zoom out on the picture. Uh, we have we have the issue of uh, the heavy metals that we talked about just briefly. A any line. It's very slight if it is. Again, I did see this in her older pictures as well, but it was much uh, less. Now, remember this photo is again digitally enhanced as all these photos will be and it is used with her permission but uh, she might not want to give my her permission after seeing this one today uh, she looks nothing like this folks this this is digitally enhanced uh, but anyway let's uh, I'm gonna move down we we identified the differences between adrenal fatigue having the dark discolorations and the anemia having the uh, lighter uh, grayish brownish darker than, than typical uh, full lower lid be, being dark uh, and we tied we tied that anemia in with, with all of the other things but it, we won't go through one by one and make this a two-hour video here so we have we have the in we, we have the adrenal fatigue we have the anemia uh, just by looking at the eyes alone we identified an issue possible issue with the thyroid which we later confirmed calcium fluoride was the biggest issue that I believe that uh, Leanne has and something that really needs to be looked at. Uh, we we also identified that with her anemia that she is going to need uh, calcium phosphate, and we were able to determine that by linking all of the facial signs to this one gal. And in looking at the four possibilities of, for anemia treatments, uh, the calcium the calcium phosphate was the one that matched this girl perfectly. Uh, then we we looked at her skin a little 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 closer and we we identified the potassium sulfate potassium sulfate uh, was the scale was the scaly the scaly skin uh, freckles the brownish yellow skin and the, again once again tied into these dark eyelids the hormonal issues were the chin acne the hair on the upper lip uh, this redness on the nose was directly linked to the anemia 
and we slid down to the neck and we see some uh, a little bit of disproportion of the neck nothing great but uh, th th there's obviously a thyroid issue when these lines stop right at the thyroid you combine it with some bulging eyes a, dis a displacement of an eye and there you've got a thyroid issue it's all confirmed for you anyway that's going to conclude this session I guess we'll talk to you next time